right. Let's get a choir hand. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, brother and sister, I want to just say happy Sabbath to you. Yeah. You know, despite the cold and everything, God's work still got to continue. Cold or hot. All right. Praise the Lord for the ones who are here to endure this cold weather. Before we get started, brother and sister, let's have the reading of the law. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Brother, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to pick up 13 through 14. Let go us ahead. hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, let's go to Revelations 22. And we're going to pick up 14 through 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, brother, thank you for reading the law. And once again, brother and sister, I want to say happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath. Uh, welcome home here to the Israel God, Jackson, Mississippi. And brother and sister, the title of the lesson today is An Invitation to eternal life and invitation to eternal life because we got to look at brother and sister that it's just like we get an invitation to different events and everything sometimes in those invitations it's instructions there or it's a dress code or they tell you how to come and then sometimes brother and sister you get an invitation you look at it to see if you want to go. And that's the same thing as we're going to look at today, brothers and sisters, that for all of us, that we do have an invitation to eternal life. The question is, are you going to be prepared? Are you going to answer that? How will you deal with being invited? Because the end game, brothers and sisters, for us is to deal with eternal life. Because it's on the table here for everyone. Now, let's start in this lesson here in John 3. John 3, and we're going to pick up 14 through 16 here. John 3. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. Verse 14, what does it say? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's right. Why is that? That whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish, but have eternal life. That's right. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, brothers and sisters, but have eternal life. Go ahead, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's right, but to have everlasting life. We got to look at here when they say that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So you have to ask yourself, brothers and sisters, that in your walk, in this invitation to eternal life, are you preparing yourself? What are you doing? How are you looking at this invite? So as we go through this lesson today, brothers and sisters, we're going to look at some different things that, hey, the invitation is there. Are you preparing yourself for this invitation? Are you ready to prepare yourself for eternal life? Now, let's move here to Luke 19. Luke 19. And we're going to pick up verse 10. Luke 19. 9 or 19? I think it's, and it's 19. Yeah. Luke 19. We're going to pick up verse 10. Listen to this here now. Luke 19 and verse 10. Go ahead. What does it say? For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's right. For the Son of Man is come to what? He's seeking. So it's just like when you're seeking something, ain't you looking for a particular thing? Just like when you're seeking for the Word of God, when you're searching. But the Lord said, For the Son of Man is come to what? Seek and to save that which was lost. Now let's see what's, what was lost, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Luke 5. Let's go back over here to Luke 5, and we're going to pick up 31. Come here to seek and to save. That was what lost. Let's look at Luke 5, and let's look at 31. Look at 31. Listen to this closely. What does it say? And Jesus answering said unto them, that they, they that are whole need not a physician. That's right. If you're feeling good, you're not just going to the doctor just to go, ain't it? They that are whole need not a physician because we just read the Lord say he come to what? Seek and to save which was lost. They that are whole need not a physician. Go ahead. But they that are sick. But they that are sick. Verse 32. I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repent. That's right. I came not to call the righteous, but what? Sinners to repentance. That's what the Lord come here when you look at that when Jesus came here then. He came here to seek the people that looking for this righteousness here, and he said he come to seek and to save. But the sinners, but he said he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to to repentance. And we know if we're dealing with sinners, we're dealing with the transgression of the law. Now let's go move here and look at John 1. John 1. Let's go back to John here. Pick up chapter 1. John 1. I'm going to pick up one verse here. Because this is what we got to understand because what we're getting into today is that invitation to eternal life. Brothers and sisters, most people, when they look at that, they only think about, hey, I can do in and everything I want to do to make myself feel good or to follow the crowd and don't really consider the true eternal life that's before them. Because everybody thinking even in a tradition a religion now, everybody think they can do what they want to. They die, everybody going to heaven, ain't it? Right. But we got to look at this here a little closer to understand here. Because remember, put that nail on the wall. The Lord said he come to seek and to save. And we just read about he didn't come for the righteous. He come for the sinners to do what? For repentance. John 1 
In verse 12, go ahead. What does it say? But as many as received him. But as many as received him, go ahead. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. To them gave he power to become what? Sons of God. The sons of God, brothers and sisters. Now, that's spiritual. Go ahead. Even to them that believe on his name. That believe on his name, brothers and sisters. And when you look at that, the average person look at it, when you just say believe, they just think, hey, I know it's a God, that's it. They're not understanding believing means keeping the commandments. The Lord just told us about if you are a sinner, you got to repent. Repent from what? What is the, the measuring stick? It's the commandment. It's the law we just read. It ain't just believing. I believe it's a God. Well, we got to ask, which God? A lot of people don't understand it's two Jesus. You got the Jesus of the Bible. Then you got the Jesus of the world. Which one are you serving? That's what believing is. And you say you got the mind of Christ or you a follower of Christ, you got to do the things of Christ. Now, when you begin to look at that, to become, they said that them gave the power to become the sons of God, man, that should be hope right there, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Even them that believe on his name. Now, let's go here and spound on it just a little bit. Let's go to John 12. John 12. John 12. And let's look at 44. John 12, and let's look at verse 44. And we're going to go through 50 here. Brother, when you get it, go ahead. What does it say? Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. That's right. Now he bringing the Father in name. Because who sent Jesus? Jesus Christ said, he that believe on me. When you believe on Christ, then it said, believe it not on me, but on him that what? Sent me. Go ahead, verse 45. And he that sees me, sees him that sent me. That's right, because they are the same, brother and sister. It's just like if you, a father, you have a son. And when people see your son, if you're doing what your father's doing, people will say, when you see the son, you see the father. Because he just like him. That's why Jesus said when you believe on him, you believe on the Father because everything comes from the Father. Verse, what we're at, 46? 46. Go ahead. I am come a light into the world. He came as darkness. Light. He said he came as a light. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. That's right. That's what the Lord said. He came as that position that was whole, but he came to the one who was lost. At one time, brother and sister, we was lost. We was in darkness. What kind of darkness, brother and sister? We was in spiritual darkness. Because if we was not in the truth now, we wouldn't be here on the Sabbath, ain't it? Mm -hmm. We'd be getting our last minute shopping in, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here, wouldn't it? No. See, that's the knowledge, brother and sister, that when he's telling us that I come a light into the world that whosoever believe it on me shall not abide in darkness. Go ahead, 47. And if a man, if, and if any man hear my words. Hear his word. Let me say, if any man hear my words, go ahead. And believe not. And believe not. I judge him not. I judge him not. Listen to that, brother. So let that soak in. Because most time when people look when Jesus came then, they, they was thinking the Lord was coming to take care of business to take them out then, right? But he said he come to seek and to save when he was here on earth to what? The ones that were sinners to turn them to what? Repentance. This is what he says, saying, if any man hear my words, I believe and believe not. He said, I judge him not, right? Go ahead. For I came not to judge the world. He did not come to judge the world then, but what? But to save the world. But to save the world. That's their position. He come to save the world then. Go ahead, verse 48, what it say? He that rejected me and received not my word Go ahead. Have the one that judges him. The one that judges him. Now listen closely, go ahead. 
the word that I have spoken. The words I have spoken when he was here trying to bring you, he the light, and try to bring you out of darkness. He said he come here not, not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejected me and received not my words had one that judged him. Go ahead. The same shall judge him in the last day. That's right, brother and sister. You see how that is? Ain't that merciful? Ain't that compassion? Had one that judged him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Go ahead, verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself. He didn't. Go ahead. But the Father which sent me. Go ahead. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Speak. That's right. So we, now we see, we know the protocol. It came from the Father, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Verse 50, what to say? And I know that his commandments, it, and I Stato, know. Start over, bro. Start over. Verse I 50. Know, Go ahead. And I know that his commandments is life everlasting. And I know that his commandment is what? Life, life everlasting. everlasting. Go ahead. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So I speak it, brothers and sisters. When you begin to look at this physician here, that when we were sick and we begin to apply the word and be able to hear the word, because when you read here, he tell you that even back in 47, and if any man hear my words, you got to hear it, brothers and sisters. Well, see, people got to realize when Jesus was here, he telling you the word that I have spoken, the saints should judge him when? In the last day. So the Lord giving you room. He giving you opportunity for repentance the invitation is that, brothers and sisters, what are you going to do with it? That was the end of 50, right? It was. Now, let's look at this a little closer here about the invitation. Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5. And we're going to pick up one verse here. Romans 5, we're going to pick up verse 12. What it say? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. That's right. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, which we know that was Adam. Go ahead. And death by sin. And death by sin, because when you transgress the law of God, what do that bring? Death. People don't realize that sin brings death, and everybody scratching their head and worry about, man, look at how all this stuff going on. You ain't looking at the transgression of the law. Brother and if you think about it, when if the world can just take a moment, think about if you truly obeying God, the spirit of the truth, will we be going through all these things? All this stuff is because of sin, brother and sister, and it's getting worse, worse, and worse. Go ahead, finish that. And so death passed upon all men but that all have sinned. They have all sinned, so if death passed upon all men, that's why it's appointed for us, what? To all to die, ain't it? Mm -hmm. See, through sin, death was put on the table. See, by sin, God's creation was interrupted. See, we weren't supposed to die, but sin brought death. Some had to die. So when you begin to look at it, brother, so it's just like when you go to a funeral, that's why you look at it, Oh, even when Jesus said about life, say he was just what? Sleep. Sleeping. Death is just an interruption, brothers and sisters. Because we're going to get to a point that I don't want to get ahead of myself. Left. We all going to live. But on which side? Now, now let's look at Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. Because the things the Lord has spoken, those words will be judged against us all the way to the last day. Ezekiel 18 and 4. This is what the Lord say here. Ezekiel 18 and 4. Go ahead. Behold, all souls are mine. All souls are mine. Go ahead. As the soul of the Father 
so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. He shall die, brothers and sisters. That's simple, ain't it? Mm -hmm. The soul that what sinneth, it shall die. Now, let's go here to 1 Corinthians 15. Because death going to come upon all men. And we know sin brought in death. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. And let's look at 21. What does it say? For since by man came death. That's right. Since by man came death, go ahead. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. That's right. The resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. For as in, for as in Adam all died. That's right. In Adam all died. When we read earlier, seeing entered into the world. By one man, if you see in the night, it's who? Adam. For as in Adam all die. That's physically. Look at this here. Go ahead. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's right. So in Christ shall what? All be made alive. Verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. At, at his coming. Brother, sister, this will never happen until after. Christ come, and we know Christ was the first fruits here that died and was raised up in every man in his own order. That we know these things here begin at the seventh trumpet. But now we're going to look at this here death because what we got to look at when Adam died, see, there was no one clean enough to come here to take away the sins of the people. So, so Christ had to come. He was the cleanest that would be able to do it because man wasn't. But see, before Christ was able to come, brother and sister, we did not have access back to the tree of life. So we got to understand it importance when the Lord say, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Christ's death and the resurrection allowed us back to the access to the tree of life. Now, Let's go to uh, Romans 5. Romans 5. And let's look at 17. Romans 5 and 17. We're going to pick up verse 17. Brother, you get it? Go ahead. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, reign by one, go ahead. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. That's right. That's the grace. That's to receive the bonds of grace and of the gift of the righteousness shall reign into what? Life. Eternal life, brothers and sisters, by one. That's what? Jesus Christ by his what? By his death. By his resurrection. Go ahead, verse 18. Therefore, as by the, by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. That's right. Go ahead. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's right, a free gift. What was that free gift, brother and sister? Faith. Have access back to the tree of life, to have that eternal life. That's the free gift. Because what did we do to allow Jesus to die and shed his blood for us to give us that access back to the tree of life? That's why it's a gift, brother and sister. That's a gift. Until you understand that spiritually, you'll begin to understand the importance of it, brother and sister. See, a lot of times people look at the shedding of the blood and really don't even think about the significance of what took place. Go ahead. Did we finish that? 19. What 19 say? For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's right. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Made righteous, brothers. So by the obedience 
of one shall many be made righteous because we know when Christ was getting ready to go through the crucifixion, he asked him to fire, he prayed to the fire for that cup to pass him, didn't he? But through his what? Obedience. So by the obedience of one shall what? Many be made righteous. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's right, that grace. Go ahead, 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteous unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That's right. Even though, <coughs> even though Adam brought death in, but through Christ, eternal life was restored unto us, brothers and sisters. Even so might grace reign through what? Righteousness. Because it's grace, ain't it? And mercy. When you think about that, brothers and sisters, that grace and mercy, when you look at back in the Old Testament, when you sin, as by two or two, by two or three witness, what happened? Yeah. The law was taken care of, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, brothers and sisters, when we sinning, and Christ is our intercessors, and the Lord giving us grace, some things we do according to the law, we can be put to death. But now, through, that's why he said, even so might grace reign through what? Righteousness into eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the grace, brothers and sisters. Grace ain't there. People thinking that I can just keep sinning, sinning, and sinning, and sinning, and that's the grace the Lord giving me. No, no. Now, let's move. What are we at? Romans? Romans. I want to add something. Go to uh, John. John 11. That's John 11. I want to look at John 11. John 11, I want to pick up 25. Because this here was when he was dealing with Lazarus and this was Martha here. I want to look at this because we, we understood back in Corinthians, you know, by, uh, by man came death, also the resurrection of the dead. Let's look at this here, verse 25, John 11. And we're going to pick up 25 and 26. I'm adding this in here. Go ahead. What did it say? Jesus said unto her. Said unto Martha. Go ahead. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. And the life. And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Go ahead. And Verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? That's right. Do you believe that, brother and sister? The world don't. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. How can you never die, brothers and sisters? See, now you're looking at feels against spiritual, ain't it? Because our invitation we have is to what? Eternal life. Physical death is just an interruption into life, into the creation. Because we're all going to be raised back up to live forever. And that's going to be if you want to be on the good side or on the bad side. We're going to get into that. But see, that's the key, brothers and sisters. Jesus with his death and dying for us, and by him dying and shedding the blood for our sins is one thing, but his resurrection was another. Jesus had to be resurrected to allow us to be able to have access back to the tree of life because he's the one allowing us back to have eternal life. 2 Peter 1. Let's go to 2 Peter 1. Second Peter 1. We're going to pick up verse 3. Second Peter 1 and verse 3. What is that, bro? According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Ain't that something? 
Brother Sus, write what you got in your lap now. He said, according as his divine power had given to us, what? All things that pertain to what? Life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Go ahead. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. That's right, to righteousness, brother and sister. He, he didn't call us or give us an invitation to foolishness. He said into glory and virtue. That's righteousness. Verse 4, what does it say? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Go ahead. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Go ahead. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through the lust. Then the Lord, we read the Lord say he come into the world as the light. That, that we don't be in the what? Darkness. For all of us, brothers and sisters, haven't we supposed to be in Escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. That's it. How you be able to escape that, brother and sister? But the Lord told us by what? Listening. Listening to what? The word. The commandments. Then he said the commandments was life. First, first John 3. First John 3. Because the Lord has given us all things pertaining to life, brothers and sisters, to be able to accept that invitation to, into eternal life. Let's look at 1 John 3, and let's look at this here. Verse, 1 John 3, we're going to pick up verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Be son of God, go ahead. Therefore the world know thus not, because it knew him not. That's right, they didn't know him, go ahead. Believe now, are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. That's right, flesh to spirit, brother and sister. The world didn't know that, therefore the world knew us not, because it what? Knew him not. Go ahead. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's right. Go ahead, verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. It's pure, brother. So when you begin to look at from flesh and be able to go to spirit, to be able to be the sons of God. And when he said, but well, we know that when he shall appear, we know when he coming, and we shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him what? As he is. But see, when you have that hope of eternal life, brothers and sisters, he said, and every man that had this hope in him, what? Purify him himself. You can't stay dirty, brothers and sisters. You can't stay dirty. You can't keep breaking the commandments of, of the law. You can't keep cherry picking the law. You got to begin to what? Purify himself, even as he is pure. That was three, wasn't it? That was three. And let's bound on that two, that when he say that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as, as he is. Let's go here to Psalm 17. Because, brothers and sisters, a lot of people don't understand eternal life. They think you're going to die and fly off to heaven and, and get wings and fly around and stuff and Peter at the gate and all that stuff, brother and sister. Psalm 17, and let's look at verse 15. What did it say? As for me. As for me. I will behold thy face in righteousness. In righteousness, go ahead. I shall be satisfied when I awake. And when I awake with what? With thy likeness. That's right. That's, then we talk about in, in our own order. Christ was the first fruits. And many going to come after him. Brothers and sisters, some of us can be alive when the Lord come and be changed. And some of us going to die. Are you going to die in righteousness? Because we know that's the interruption or the creation, 
But then it said, when I wait with thy likeness. It's about the spiritual brothers and sisters. Let's go to Revelations 3. Let's go to Revelations 3. Revelations 3. And we're going to look at verse 18. Because this is what we got to look at. Remember with this word, the purification, brother and sister. We can't stay dirty. Got to get clean, brother and sister. Verse 18, what does it say? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That's right. It said to buy of me what gold tried in fire. Go ahead. That thou mayest be, mayest be rich. That thou may be rich. We got to look at what is this gold? What is thou to be rich? Go ahead. And white raiment. And white raiment. We know white raiment represents what? Righteousness. Is gold, physical gold, going to make you righteous? That gold, brothers and sisters, is the word. Tried in the fire. Go ahead. That thou mayest be clothed. Be clothed. Go ahead. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That's right. Your sin should not appear. Go ahead. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve. Anointment. Go ahead. That thou mayest see. That thou mayest see, brothers and sisters. A lot of us still blind. It's just like when uh, Paul, he said he had to take the scales off his eyes, didn't he? Brothers and sisters, it's the word. Try to find that thou mayest be what? Rich. In what? In white raiment, brothers and sisters. Righteousness. That thou mayest be clothed, that thy shame of thy what? Nakedness. What is nakedness here speaking of, brothers and sisters? Sin. Because God's word supposed to be, as we get farther in here, the Lord going to keep telling the word got to be in you. When it's in you, it's going to be manifest out, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want your shame and weakness to be seen, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be striving for that white raiment. So your nakedness or your sin do not appear. Let's go here to Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. We're going to pick up. 20. Go ahead. Hear counsel. And Hear what? Hear counsel. Go ahead. And receive instruction. Receive instruction. Go ahead. That thou mayest be wise in thy, la in thy latter end. That's right, brother, sister. That thou mayest be wise when? In thy latter end, because then Christ tell us he came then seeking and to save in, in the words that I speak, that he says he's not going to judge you now, but those words are going to be judged against you when? The last. At the latter end, brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 21. What did 21 say? There are many devices in a man's heart. That's right. That, this mind always running, ain't it? There are many devices in a man's heart. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. That's right. The counsel of the Lord going to do what? Going to stand, brother and sister. Those are things going to help you hear, hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Now, Now go to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Let's look at yeah, Proverbs 23. We're going to pick up one place. 23. Real simple. What does it say? By the truth. It said, by the truth. And sell it not. And sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. And understanding, brothers and sisters. 
So what we're looking at now is, you know, what's the price and what does it cost, brothers and sisters, to buy? Let's see what he means by buy the truth and sell it, not also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Let's go to Revelations 21. By the truth. We got to understand that. Let's go to Revelation, excuse me, Revelations 21. Revelations 21. We're going to pick up verse 6. It said, buy the truth and sell it not. So what we're looking at now, what's the price? What does it cost to buy? Revelation 21 and 6. Go ahead. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Go ahead. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I will give unto him that is what? A thirst, brother and sister. Do you thirst for the word? It says a thirst of the fountain of the water of life and it's what? Freely. freely. That freely, brothers and sisters, as you're looking at free more agency, don't nobody have a gun to your head to keep the Sabbath, do it? Mm -hmm. Is anybody going to pressure you, brothers and sisters, to try to understand and get eternal life? These are things the Lord is saying is freely. That's why he said he's just giving his word. The word's going to judge you later because it's there. When he read the commandments and the law to you, you got to apply that. When you don't, all those things, brother and sister, be against you at the end for judgment because you're still living here. The greatest gift you can have each and every day, the first one is the breath of life because once you get that, you can repent, you can forgive, or you can get strong in the word as long as you got that breath. But it's freely, brother and sister, but you got the thirst. The thirst of the fountain a water, that's that word of life, is what? Freely. Free more agency. It's up to you to, to accept that invitation, brothers and sisters, to the eternal life. Then we read the Lord say he gave us all the things pertaining to life. It's this word, brothers and sisters, we have it. We got to apply it. Got to apply it. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Remember that now the fountain of water life is freely. Why are you sitting here today? Why did you get baptized? Those are things you ask. Why? It's freely, brother and sister. Isaiah 55, and let's look at verse 1. What does it say? Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth. That thirst. Then we just read that. A thirst for the fountain of water freely. Ho, oh, everyone that what thirsteth. Go ahead. Come ye to the waters. He that hath no money. Have no money. Come ye buy. And buy. Go ahead. He said come and buy. But he said that have no money. Go ahead. And eat. And eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Without price, brother and sister. Y'all understanding that? Putting your time in it. Thirsting for it. That's what you want, brother and sister. It ain't about no money. Just add verse 2. Read verse 2. Listen what it say. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? It's a question mark behind that. Some of us doing it, brothers and sisters, and people are doing it. Wherefore do you spend your money for that which is not bread? It's that word. Some people are putting, spending physically money on vomit. But the Lord telling you this truth is free. Freely. That means... Free more agency, brother and sister. All you got to do is apply yourself. Accept the invitation. Go ahead, uh, Skip. I mean, go to Isaiah 12. Look at Isaiah 12. Let's 
Yeah, Isaiah 12. Isaiah 12, we're going to look at verse 3. What does it say about that, that water? Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's right. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. That water is the word out of the wells of salvation. Go back to verse 2. Let's look at this salvation here. What does it say? Behold, God is my salvation. God is who? God is my salvation. Go ahead. I will trust and not be afraid. Go ahead. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. My salvation, brothers and sisters. That's what it rely at, brothers and sisters, here. We got the thirst for that word. It's freely if you accept it. Now, go to John 4 and 14. I just want to add that in there. John 4 and 14. John 4 and 14. Then after that, we're going to go back to Isaiah 55. John 4 and 14. That fountain is free. Let's look what the Lord is saying. John 4 and 14. What does it say? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Shall never thirst. Go ahead. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's right. That's that word. Are you looking for that word, brother and sister? Or do you want that bottle of water that you're going to get thirsty over and over again? I shall give him, shall be in him a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. I think about water just shooting like you see on the, a fire hydrant. You know how that water just be shooting up out of there? It's how it be shooting up out of us, brothers and sisters. But it's into what? Everlasting life. Now, in this here, let's look at on this invitation to eternal life. You know, it's there. What's the catch or the criteria here? Let's go back to Isaiah. Uh, 55. Isaiah 55. And we're going to pick up <coughs> 3 and 4. Isaiah 55, 3 and 4. What did it say? Incline your ear. Close your ears. Incline your ear. Go ahead. And come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. That's right, brother and sister. When you see that, incline your ear, come into me here, and your soul shall what? Live. And I will make an what? Everlasting covenant with you. Brother and sister, that's what we want, that everlasting covenant. The Lord will put these things in place as we're going to get to, brothers and sisters, dealing with Christ dying for the remission of our sin, the resurrection, then the baptism. You got to get under the blood of Jesus Christ. But I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. When the Lord put that there, the mercies of David, we know the things David did, didn't it? Then God showed David mercy. He did. Then God still used David. He did. Ain't Jesus still gonna sit on the throne of David? Correct. Even despite the things, that's the mercy, brothers and sisters, the Lord has given. Not saying the things you have done, you still can't pay a price down the road. But the Lord can forgive you. The Lord still can use you. David asked for forgiveness. David began to fast. David laid all the way down on the bed of his bed on the earth, didn't he? That's what you got to do, brother and sister. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Verse 4, what does it say? Behold, I have given him for a witness to, to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. That's right. Even though David made some mistakes, the Lord, we see the mercy the Lord still gave David, but he still what? Make an everlasting covenant with you. 
Now let's move here to uh, and look at this. Let's go to Acts 3. By this everlasting covenant, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Acts 3. Acts 3. And we're going to pick up verse 19. Lord, put it in order for us, brothers and sisters. But we just can't come to the Lord any kind of way or the way you want to come. What's the Lord tell us to do right here? Acts 3 and 19, what does it say? Repent. Repent. Ye therefore, and be converted. And be converted. Go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's right. What you have to do, brothers and sisters? Repent. Repent ye therefore, then what? Be converted. What's going to convert you, brothers and sisters? The word of God. That your sins may be what? Blotted out. Because once you get converted, brothers and sisters, you'll want to get baptized. And how you going to get your sins blotted out now? He on earth. Through the baptism. Give you a clean slate. That's how you do that, brothers and sisters. Repent. Be converted. That your sins may be what? Blotted out. You go into the baptism. But once you get out there baptism, brothers and sisters, you can't go back and get dirty as you was when you got in. You got to begin to have a newness of life. Change your thinking. That's mercy. That's like you look at what David said, the mercies of David. That's the mercy of us, brothers and sisters. The Lord, through his death and through his resurrection, that's the mercy. That's the grace that we're still able to get eternal life. Repent. Brothers and sisters, that's what we have to do and be converted. And then when you get into baptism, your sins then can be blotted out. But you can't get back up doing the same things, brothers and sisters. Because you jeopardize that eternal life on the good side. Now, after that, let's go to Acts 2. Go right over to Acts 2. We're going to pick up 38 and 39. What does it say? Then Peter said unto them. What he said do? Repent. And do what? And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's right, brother and sister. See, when we begin to do these things, we put in order here. Repent and be baptized. When you begin baptized, you're getting up under the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to do that, brothers and sisters, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the, For the remissions of sin. Now look at verse 39. What does it say? For the promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. And to your children. And to your children. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Brothers and sisters, y'all see that? That promise, when you begin to do these things here, it said the promise is unto you and then unto your children and to all that what are far off. As many as the Lord God shall what? Call. See, when the Lord say here, the Lord our God shall call, he's, that, that's that invitation, brothers and sisters. But are you going to accept it? The Lord showing us these things here, but look at about the invitation to you, your, your children, and, and for all. Let's read it. Let's go to Luke 24 because you don't want no one thinking that, hey, it's only for Israel. Let's go back here to Luke. Luke 24. And let's pick up 44. Luke 24 and 44. So we got to do it God's way, brothers and sisters, not our way. Luke 24 and 44, go ahead, what does it say? And he said unto them, Go ahead. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. Go ahead. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning me. See, everybody want to take Jesus out of the Old Testament, but then look what you just read here. 
while I was yet with you, that all the things must be fulfilled, which were written where? In the law of Moses. First five books. And what? And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Look at verse 44. What does it say? Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, brother, so when you look at that, who opened up your understanding, brother and sister? Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, brother and sister. See, when the Lord opened your mind to get this knowledge, the Lord going to look at how you handle it. Are you going to get off in an advantage? Are you going to get puffed up? Just as he opened your understanding, the Lord can close it. The Lord can allow you to get caught up, brother and sister, and not see the spirit of the truth no more. So when you get your knowledge and get your understanding, you get the glory to God and not give it to yourself. Because a lot of people get this knowledge, brother and sister, thinking they mind and open up. No, we just read it. Then open he their understanding that they might, what? Understand the scriptures. That knowledge comes from, uh, from God, brothers and sisters, not of yourself. Look at 46, what it say? And said unto them. What it say? Thus it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer. To suffer, go ahead. And to rise from the dead the third day. That's right, he suffered. He died for us for the remission of sin. And to what? Rise from the dead on the third day. So you had to have the crucifixion of Christ. And then you had to have the what? The resurrection. Because sin had entered in through Adam. So Christ had to come. Now look at verse 47, what does it say? And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Preached in his name where? Among all nations. Among just Israel? All nations. All nations, but then what? Beginning where? Beginning at Jerusalem. That's right. That's the protocol, brothers and sisters. It's going to come out of Jerusalem. It's going to come through Israel because we got to teach the rest of the sons of Adam's on it. But he's telling you, preach in his name among what? All nations beginning at Jerusalem because we know the law going to come out of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That was 47, yeah, wasn't it? 47. Now let's look at this here, brother. So when you look at this imitating, Lord, give us the instruction about repenting, converting, so your sin be blotted out with the baptism. But let's look at what if some reject this imitation and miss out. What are they going to be missing out on? Let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. It's a lot of stuff, brothers and sisters, going to be answered if we just read the book. See why the world in the conditions then. Why the world is wax cold now. Why is so much sin, so much fornication, all these type of things, crime, no more love. Hebrews 13, we're going to pick up verse 20. What does it say? Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That's right. That great shepherd of the sheep. That great shepherd of the sheep. Go ahead. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. That's right. Through the blood of the what? Everlasting, everlasting covenant. But look at 21 when you miss that invitation or you don't accept it. What, what do it do, that blood of the everlasting covenant? 21, what does it say? Make you perfect. Make you what? Make you perfect. Go ahead. In every good work to do his will. That's right. Go ahead. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. You see what you're missing out on, brother and sister? To make you what? Perfect in every good work to do what? His will and not your will because so many of us, Brothers and sisters are too busy doing our will or doing the will of the world and not the will of that great shepherd of the sheep. Now, let's move a little farther here. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Go back a little bit. Hebrews 10, and we're going to start in 22. Hebrews 10, and we're going to look at verse 22. Bro, when you get it, go ahead. Listen to what it say. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Of faith. That's what it's about. You got to believe. 
Go ahead. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil con conscience. That's right. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, brother. So that's why the Lord told us repent and be converted. That's that word going to convert you to be baptized to get away from it. What? Your mind sprinkled from what? A evil conscience. Go ahead. And our bodies washed with pure water. Pure water. That word got to be washed. Got to be cleansed, brother and sister. We can't deal with the Lord filthy and unrighteous. We got to be cleansed. Go ahead, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That's right, without wavering. We can't be going back and forth, brother and sister. Let us hold fast the profession of what? Our faith without what? Wait. Wavering. Go ahead. For he is faithful that promise. That's right. He's faithful. Go ahead. And let us consider one another one let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That's right. That's simple, ain't it? But you know, that's sometimes they get hard. But it's simple. How it becomes simple, brother and sister. But once your heart sprinkled from what? Evil conscience. You begin to do what the Lord said do. Go ahead, verse 25, what does it say? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some, some is. is. Go ahead. But exhorting one another. That's right, that means urging one another. Go ahead. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Approaching, 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Right there, hold on, brothers, stop. Put the brakes on. <laughs> Put the brakes on. Brother and sister, when you repent, you've been converted, and you got into that baptism, the Lord says, blot out your sins. You got a clean slate, brother and sister. But when you begin, say, for if we sin willfully, out there we have received the what? Knowledge. The knowledge of what? Truth. The truth. You know it when you got in that water, didn't you? Go ahead, finish it. There what? There remaineth no sacrifice for sin. No more sacrifice for sin, brother and sister. Christ ain't getting back on the cross no more. You on your own, brother and sister. That's the mercy of the Lord allow you. When you get into that water, you carrying a whole lot on you. you. We did a whole lot of sinning. Some in ignorance and some we know. But when we got in that water and come out, brother and sister, and we begin to sin willfully, there remains no more sacrifices for sins, brother and sister. They're on you then. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of a judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. That's right, the enemy of God. 28, what it say? He that despised Moses' law, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That's right, brother and sister. <clears throat> That's what we was talking about earlier in the old days. Brother and sister, you done something and two or three said it, what happened? You died. Now, brother and sister, you do things, the Lord give us mercy to what? To forgive and, and have opportunity to talk about it. Look at verse 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God? and have counted the blood of the covenant Go ahead. wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. Go ahead. And have not, have, have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Yeah, because brother, so think about it. I want to go back, go back and look at, let show you in 28, when we talk about mercy and we talk about compassion now, because back then on the two or three witnesses, they say, Despise Moses' law, died without mercy. It's just like when you go into the numbers when the man was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. And when he consulted, what happened? He was killed, wasn't he? he was. How many of us do things more than picking up sticks on the Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. But you still here, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Food for thought. That's grace, brothers and sisters. That's mercy. That's compassion. Now, on verse 29, read that again. I want to get into this. Go ahead. Listen to this here. Go ahead. Of how much sore punishment. Punishment. Suppose ye shall be thought worthy. Thought worthy. Go ahead. Who have trodden underfoot 
the Son of God. That's right. Try none to foot the Son of God. Go ahead. And counted the blood of the covenant. That's right. Counted the blood of the covenant what? Wherewith he was sanctified. But well, he was sanctified, but what? An unholy thing. That's how we looked at it, brother and sister. Go ahead. And hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Of the grace, brother and sister. A lot of us didn't even appreciate this of him dying. He telling you where it was, he was sanctified, but then we looked at it as a what? An unholy thing. A lot of us doing that now, brothers and sisters. We say we love the Lord, but we ain't loving the Lord because we ain't keeping the commandments. Some of this is the same thing Jesus died for us to give us this access back to the tree of life, to give us eternal life. We look at it as unholy thing, that act. We're not taking it serious. We're not looking at the grace and the compassion of the Lord has granted us back to that tree of life, brothers and sisters. We're not looking at that. Skip down to verse 31. Go ahead. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's right. You know, we got to begin to look at that, brothers and sisters. Because if we begin to see these things that we take this, the blood of Jesus Christ serious and look at what he has put back on the table, you begin to obey. See, a lot of us are not understanding that. That's what I see. I mean, you really think about it, brothers and sisters, you shouldn't have to call nobody that's been baptized to keep the Sabbath day. That should be your way of life. Amen. Amen. See, those are things, brother, so we don't look at. See, we want to know knowledge. We want to speak knowledge, but we don't want to live to that knowledge that you're speaking out of your mouth. Are you with me? I'm with you. Simple. Because yep. you see it. You know who's thirsting for the word of God. You see it. You know it ain't but a few. You see it, brothers and sisters, and the people who coming in through these doors in any conditions. You look at it. Ain't always looking for an excuse not to serve God. But we do everything else the other six days and don't really make no excuses. But when it comes to the Sabbath, we sure try to make them in. It? Yeah. it can be two degrees Monday, you're going to work, ain't going it? Going to work. Be negative 20, you're going to be at work Monday. Yep. But when it comes to the word of God, we always want to circumvent it. He understands. But read 31 again. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's right, because he know your heart. He know what you're doing. Now, let's move on. Uh, we finished that. Let's go to John 3 and 36. John 3 and 36. John 3 and 36. Brother, what does it say? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That's right. Go ahead. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Not see life. Not see eternal life, brother and sister. Go ahead. But the wrath of God abideth on him. But the wrath of God abideth on him. See, the life we're looking for, brother and sister, that eternal life on the good side. That's something you got to consider. Believing not in the Son, believing not in the Son is not doing what the Lord say. That's even with the commandments, judgment, laws, statutes, brothers and sisters, we got to do. But you don't want the wrath of God to buy the what? On him. Let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16, we'll pick up one verse there. Mark 
16. Brother, you get it? Go ahead. What does it say? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That's it, ain't it? Cut and dry. He that believeth, that means you begin to be converted. And is what? Baptized shall be saved, brother and sister. Because you at a point that you under the blood of Jesus Christ. That saved don't mean that you ain't got to continue doing works. That means, brother and sister, that the Lord know you because you're under the blood of Jesus Christ. You could be saved, but you still got to do your works because you didn't fit some of the criteria of believing and being baptized. Now, as you begin to do the commandments and the laws, brother and sisters, that's how you're being saved because you are putting the work in to be able to get eternal life. Because a lot of people look at being saved as it. I go to church, get baptized, that's it. Some people thinking like that people ain't got baptized, you never saw them again. And they don't realize, brothers and sisters, that whatever they doing against being under the blood of Jesus Christ, they are bringing damnation to themselves. That's why, brothers and sisters, we got to try our best to reach out to our brothers and sisters because they don't realize that. They chasing everything else in the world but the word of God. Everything. And when you get in that water and don't do what the Lord say, because you the one made the vow or you made the covenant, right? right? That's against you. It's on you. That's the damnation that you bring upon yourself when you do not do what the Lord said do. I don't understand why Israel don't understand that. It's like talking to this thing like a, a wall. Because your action is going to show different when you believe and understand that, hey, I got to do what the Lord say. Because when you begin not to, brothers and sisters, that damnation against you is on your head. And it's up to our brothers and sisters to try to talk to that brother, talk to that sister. But it's on you, brothers and sisters. It's going to happen. Now, let's go to Matthew 22. Let's look at this parable here. Of the rejection of the invitation, brothers and sisters. It's going to happen, brothers and sisters. Matthew 22. <coughs> Matthew 22. We're going to pick up verse 1. There's a parable here. Listen to this real closely, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Go ahead. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. To the wedding. That means another word for bidden is invite. Go ahead. And they would not come. And they what? They would not they come. They would not come. Go ahead. Verse 4. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. That's right. Come unto the marriage. You've been invited. Go ahead, fire. But they made light of it. They made what? Light of it. That's what we're doing, brothers and sisters. We're making light of it. We're making light of this calling. you reading it here in the book. Ain't, your, ain't this in red? Lord knows. But they made light of it. Go ahead. And went their ways. And went their ways. Go one, ahead. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. To his merchant. Everybody take care of them. Man. They own business. They making light of this, brother and sister. Go ahead. And the remnant took his servants. And did what? And entreated them spitefully and slew they them. And slew them. Now look what the Lord weighed in. Verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was wroth and did what? And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Go ahead, verse 8. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready. The wedding is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Were not worthy, brothers and sisters. Are you going to be invited? And the Lord look at you and you would get all caught off in your own self and not doing what the Lord say 
Then he said, which were bid were what? Not worthy. This is for real, brothers and sisters. Verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. That's right. The ones that first got invitation that said not worthy, said go on back out and keep going. Keep going. That's the purpose, brothers and sisters. We continue to strive to work toward the evangelizing, keep trying to build the body of Christ. Because some, brothers and sisters, just taking this calling lightly. And then you're going to get to that point when they say, which are bidden or invited, were what? Not worthy. Go ahead. What are you at? Verse what? Ten. Ten. What does it say? So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together uh, gather together all as many as they found, both bad and good. See, both bad and good. Go ahead. And the wedding was furnished with guests. It was furnished with guests, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. Not having that wedding garment on. Can't just come to the Lord any kind of way, brothers and sisters. Get that out your head. You got to serve all the Lord, brothers and sisters, not six or seven of them. All of them. Verse 12, what it say? And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? Go ahead. And he was speechless. He was speechless, brothers and sisters. Verse 13, what it say? Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him away. Cast, bind him. Take him away, yeah. Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Into the lake of fire. Go there, ahead. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see that, brother and sister? Are you, this invitation to eternal life, are you preparing yourself so you have on the right garment? And that right garment, brother and sister, is righteousness. Not wickedness. Righteousness, brothers and sisters. That you don't want the Lord to come and say, hey, which were bidden were not worthy. But see, look at verse 14. What does it say? For many are called. For many are called, brothers and sisters. You called, but what? But few are chosen. But a few chosen, brothers and sisters. And what's that few? Ones who doing what the Lord is saying. A lot of you are called and know the knowledge, but are you doing what the Lord say? Can you be that few that's chosen? Or are you going to be the ones full of knowledge, but then you ain't doing what the Lord say? That means you're going to be not worthy. Because sometimes, brothers and sisters, when God's word is supposed to be manifesting in you and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you can cause other people to stumble. Man, I thought you supposed to keep the Sabbath, man, but man, you out doing this here. Man, I thought you, man, do the dietary law, but you sneaking by and there eating ribs. I thought you was a man of God, man. Why are you cheating on your wife? And a man at first can hear you and say, man, okay, I like the God he served. But then he began to watch you. He said, man, no, I don't know about that God. That's the same God in the world. Brother and sister, you got to be sanctified in the word. It got to separate you. When people come in here, the visitors, and, and, and when we come in here, it can't be like the world. You can't bring the world in here, brother and sister. We got to bring the spirit of the truth in here. Not the world. Because a person coming in and say, what's the difference in the, the uh, church in the world and the church? It's the same there. They, they fornicating here. They committing adultery. Got foul communication. No respect. What's the difference? Brother, so they got to be a difference because you don't want the Lord to get to you and say that you're not worthy. Because think about it. Verse 14, brother and sister, you need to take the heart. A lot of us in here baptized, but can you be that few that's chosen? He's not finna choose you if you lukewarm. Come on now, we got to be righteous. Didn't he say we're early to be perfect? You got to strive, you got to thirst for us. See, when you thirst for these things, Brothers and sisters, you're going to begin to shape up what you're short in or what you're stumbling in because you're thirsting for it and the Lord going to give it to you. He'll show you how to do it, but brothers and sisters, we don't want to do it. But look, 
Let's go here. We finished 14, right? We did. Because I tell anybody, read 14, brother and sister, put your highlight on it, and then go right back and read 13. That should wake you up, man. Mm -hmm. Just because you baptized, brother and sister, do not mean you're going to make it to get eternal life on the good side of the kingdom. Matthew 25. Let's look at this here. Because see, some people think they're going to just get in the kingdom just in spite of themselves. But let's look at this here. Matthew 25, and we're going to read starting verse 1. Listen to this closely, brothers and sisters. And after this, we got four more. Everybody there? Go ahead, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Unto ten virgins, go ahead. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. That's right, go ahead. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Were, were foolish, okay, go ahead. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. No oil, that's that word, brother and sister, no oil in their lamp. You got to, when you go out in this world, you got to have that oil in you. You can't be out there on your thoughts. Go ahead. But the wise what we at? four. Verse four. Go ahead. But the wise took oil in their vessels, and but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That's right. See, but the wise took oil in their what? Vessels with their lamps. Go ahead. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. See, that's what they think. That just because the Lord ain't here, man, I got all year. See, just because they said, why the, the bridegroom what, Terry? They all did what? Slumber and slept. That's what we're doing now, Israel. Just because I'm 30 years old, I'm 40 years old, man. You ain't expected to make the 7 to 80, but you'll think, well, okay, I'll start serving the Lord next year. I'll tighten up next week or two years from now. Brothers and sisters, ain't nothing that's guaranteed, brothers and sisters, the next day. But see, when we look at that room the Lord give us, we think we can do what we want to. Verse 5 again. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Go ahead. And at midnight there was a cry made. A cry made then. What happened? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Uh-oh. -uh. Go you out to meet him. To go meet him. Go ahead. What happened? Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. That's right. All of them now. Some of them were slumbering and sleep, but then all of them got up, right? Look at verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Mm -mm. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Go ahead. Least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, buy for yourselves. That's right. Didn't we talk about that buy early? You got to be filled with that word, brothers and sisters. That's that oil. You got to be prepared. You can't slumber and be sleep. First, that was verse 10, right? That was verse 9. <coughs> Read verse 10. What does it say? And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And the bridegroom came because he told them earlier that you ain't got to buy. Well, that buying is having time. That, hey, didn't he say that fountain of water was freely? Mm -hmm. All they had to do was just keep it in them. The other ones had it, didn't it? But see, they took. Christ not coming right then is slack. But when he did come, they weren't prepared, brothers and sisters. Are we going to be prepared? But look what it say. The bridegroom came and did what? And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. So they went on in. The one was ready, wasn't right. But what happened to the others? And the door was shut. And the door was shut. Just like the time of Noah, brothers and sisters, when the doors was closed, everybody was partying and Mary and doing everything. Thought Noah was a fool while he was building that ark and the sun out in the, in the, uh, in the ground drying. Boy, look at that fool over there. Mm -hmm. But then when that water hit, everybody won't run to the ark then. then. But them doors was what? Oh. Shut. Just like this going to happen, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Say, Lord, open to us. They told them, now, now they want to call on the Lord, now ain't it? 
But look at all that time, like right now, we got right now, brothers and sisters, to put that oil in our lamp. Are you putting oil in your lamp? Or are you slumber? Or are you sleep? Think about that. Go ahead. 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Man, do you want the Lord to tell you that? If you do not straighten up and begin to seek righteousness, that's exactly what he's going to tell you. I know you not. Because the Lord tells us, but read 13, this I had 13, because this is what we got to be able to do when you come into the word, brother, what it say? Watch therefore. Watch therefore. Don't slumber and sleep, is it? Go ahead. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We're coming. You got to prepare yourself, brother and sister. Now just look at a reward to everlasting life or everlasting contempt because what we're going to look at, brother and sister, we all going to get a reward. Everybody in this room is in this church and in this world going to get a reward. Which one you want? Let's go to Daniel 12. Nobody going to be left out. Everybody going to be judged by their race that they run. I went back way too far, Daniel. Let's look at Daniel 12. Daniel 12. And let's look at verse 2. What does it say? And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. They shall awake. That's that inner rush we talked about when Adam seeing that death came on the table. Ain't it? And he said they're going to wake, ain't it? But they're going to wake to what? Some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting life. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's right. Brothers and sisters, y'all see that? Do you understand that? Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Because some of us can be alive when the Lord comes, but some of us, we're going to die. They're sleeping in the dust. So the Lord let you know. Then he said, all souls are mine. So even though you die, your walk's going with you and he's going to wake you up. Didn't we just read that? Mm -hmm. Sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to what? Everlasting light and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, what does it say? And they that be wise. They that be wise. Shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Go ahead. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's right. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to what? Right. Righteousness. That means, brothers and sisters, you got to begin to do it first. How you going to correct somebody when you're not doing thus said the Lord? That's how you turn. That's our job, brothers and sisters, to get people to do righteousness, to get away from their unrighteousness, get away from their wickedness. Turn them to their righteousness. Now, let's go here and just look at Job, four, uh, Job 14. Then we got two more spots after that. Let's go to Job. You know, this for real business, brothers and sisters. Job 14. Listen to what Job asked here. He asked a question. Job 14 and 14. What does it say? If a man die, shall he live again? Hey, oh. That's a reasonable question, ain't it? Because we know through sin, death came on the table, didn't it? But if a man dies, shall he live again? Question mark. Go ahead. All the days of my appointed time will I wait? All the, all the days of my appointed time will I wait for what? Till my change come. Till my change come, brother and sister. That's why we said death, that physical death, is just an interruption in the creation. Even though you die physically, the Lord going to wake you up at that appointed time and your change going to come. And when he said wait, it's to what? Everlasting life or everlasting contempt? 
Verse 15, what does it say? Thou shalt call. Thou shalt call and what? And I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. That's right. Even though if you die, brothers and sisters, you're going to wake up. Or even if you're here, brothers and sisters, you're going to be able to change. But see, the Lord tells us with this eternal life, blessed, who's in the what? First resurrection. That's what we should all in here should be striving to do, to be in that first resurrection. But if you know you sinning willfully and doing the things not to get there, don't look for it. Because you know, brother and sister, when you sinning willfully, sometimes we do sin in ignorance or something we might not have full understanding on, but in time it's going to come to you. It's simple, brother and sister. Now, let's go here to John 5. John 5. John 5, 28, verse 28, John 5, and let's look at 28. Because when Job said he's going to wait on this appointed time, then he said when he hear the voice, he's going to wait. Lord telling us something here. This for real, brothers and sisters. Ain't nobody finna go fly off into heaven, the third heaven. Look what the Lord say here, verse 28, what it say? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. That's right, ain't it, brothers and sisters? In which all that are in the graves shall what? Hear his voice and then what? And shall come forth. And shall come forth. They that have done good go ahead. unto the resurrection of life. Go ahead. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. So, brother, so we all going to get a reward. We all going to live forever. Which side do you want to be on? The Lord finna give us some hope here. Last play, Deuteronomy 30. If our God is not merciful, this is what you finna read. The Lord, we finna read some, and the Lord gonna give you the answer. And if you go against this, it's on you. Deuteronomy 30 and 19, what it say? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Go ahead. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Ain't that hope, brother and sister? Ain't that mercy? That I have set before you what? Life and death, blessing and cursing. But he tells you what? Choose life. That's eternal life, brothers and sisters. Accept that invitation so the Lord don't look at you and say, not worthy. That's what we got to do, brothers and sisters. So hope somebody learned something today. Thank you for your time. Right.